I'm drinking tea in your honor, Trevor. I know that's probably not obvious, but you I mean, mean it's you like it's and... it's nine thirteen and you're not drinking an espresso? What's that's wrong right. with you? Late, late off it tonight. One time thing. I wanted to be on for this, you know. Been hitting it hard these past couple of years. He's <laughs> I mean, you got to be careful. <laughs> stop! Stop at eight fifty nine now. Stop at eight fifty nine. There you go. That's when you call it. <laughs> Only on Fridays. Only on Fridays. That's not bad. <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right. Well, Matt Warren, Ben Hall. I, I thought of some really good introductions for you. Matt Warren, you're the only guy I know with six-pack abs and has a better understanding of calculus than anybody that I know. And Ben Hall, you are a man that Christopher Nolan is going to know my name in about two years' time. So, what's up, guys? Welcome. Hey, hey thanks Hello. for uh, letting us hang out on fancy stuff like this. I know, I know. On quarantine through virtual means. Through virtual means. So, instead <laughs> of hanging out, we're just hanging out in Zoom, man. So Matt, you live here in Panama City. You're an engineer, and you're like the smartest guy that Ben and I know, right, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I fooled you for a while. <laughs> you did. It's you're good. like the I most athletic, the bro guy, but now you're like the smartest guy. Man, I I cover it up well. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben, you're in you're in Hollywood land doing doing yeah. your thing. How's it going? It's going really well. I mean, considering all that's happening right now, things have actually stayed pretty consistent for me, which has been good. I'm, I'm not on a show because everything's shut down, but all the stuff I've been working on on the side is, is actually going pretty darn well. So. That's not bad. So do you have Spielberg working with you yet? <laughs> well, can't speak to that just yet. But, uh, <laughs> classified. <laughs> classified. And Matt, you're working on a whole bunch of stuff, man. You've got your little side project going on, and you are working on revitalizing your yard, man, the uh, yard of the month oh, in Springfield. You know, it's really what uh, I feel like puts the agriculture to use is uh, <laughs> trying to grow some grass. You think it's easy <laughs> until you throw seed down, and uh, it gives you a little respect for folks who actually successfully grow things. I know, right? Your, <laughs> your, your yard is going to go from looking like a sand dune to looking like a, a fairway at a golf course. It's going to be great. That's right. It's and uh, get the putting greens out, and Ronnie loves to dig where you just just plant grass. So Ronnie's the cutest. Fun Ronnie, stuff. Ronnie's the best. So Ben, your dog Russ and yeah. Ronnie need to hang out. They would be best friends. They do. We got to figure out a way to get them twenty five hundred miles to the <laughs> west coast. But, uh, I mean, dogs do not enjoy the Zoom thing quite as much. No, <laughs> into it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have the attention span. They're more they're more confused than anything, really, probably. So, all right. So, you guys, welcome to the Monday show. This new little random thing that we're doing. So, you guys probably do or do not know of the Farm Traveler podcast. So, probably, Ben, you've been on an episode. Matthew, this is your first time. We should have gotten you on a, a long time ago. I hope Sorry. I never offended you with that. But, I mean, you're on now, man. This is your show. A little show. hurt, but I'll, I'll put it aside for now. You better. You better. <laughs> so, all right. So, you've listened to a couple of episodes, Matt. So, tell us, what is the thing that you have learned? Not to put you man. on the spot. Oh uh, yeah, I see. I get to go go first. Well, man, my biggest my biggest takeaway is uh, Ben. You know this when I look at the movie industry and Trevor, you're learning it as I look at ag. But I did not know what a breadth to uh, the industry there is. You know, you look at something that you're not involved in, and you just kind of go, "There are people who made these crops and did <laughs> something to make animals grow enough for them to end up." on a plate or in the restaurant and what happened between a and b um didn't matter <laughs> to me you know and uh to see that there's not only just work done in each of the areas that i didn't know existed but that that system is huge and that you know the there's processes and people who really um dive into detail and are passionate about those things finding a way um to the consumer has been uh super interesting dude that's awesome and i mean that's a good point because you would think it's just like step a to b but it's actually like step a b c d e f g like there's so many steps and processes <laughs> so that's a really good point that's crazy and yeah i mean looking at ben we think oh they just make movies that's it but i mean ben you know it's a little bit more elaborate than that right yeah we definitely go through the whole alphabet with ours <laughs> <laughs> so so what have you learned ben you probably learned a couple of things what have you learned 
yeah, I'm like Matt. I haven't heard all the episodes, but I'm definitely listening when I can. And it's just been it's just been fun to see you grow in this uh, podcast. Oh, thank you. And, you know, see you bring together what you started to do to you know to educate people on agriculture. It's really cool. Um, I for me, my favorite episode uh, was the one you did with um, Will Leonard. Yeah, uh, oh Will. But yeah, the forestry industry there in, in uh, Northwest Florida. Um, that was really cool. I, I mean, what was cool for me about that is, that, first of all, I know Will and, and like him quite a bit. And it was just really interesting to understand um, how much, you know, the hurricane really has impacted that community and how, you know, in a decade's time, it's really going to show. Um, I just found that fascinating. I've also really enjoyed just listening. And I, I remember years ago before you started this podcast, you talked to me about how, you know, GMOs are not this big villain that they are sometimes painted to be, you know, that they are very necessary to feed the planet. And um, it's been interesting just listening and learning about that and, and how it's, it's not necessarily toxic to us. Um, it's just another way of making sure that there's ample food supply for uh, the population. So it's, it's been cool just kind of learning about that. Thanks, bro. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Will, th that was such a cool episode because, I mean, we know him. We all grew up knowing Will. But his voice, though, is like smooth as silk. And it, you can just listen to him talk for hours. And so I had a bunch of people like screenshot it and send it to me like, man, I could listen to Will all day talk about forestry. <laughs> so that was awesome. And that's cool about GMOs, too, because like, honestly, when I started this, I knew about GMOs, but I didn't know the whole science behind them and like all the research and stuff that goes into it. So it's been really cool to like learning from like actual experts that kind of talk about the research and that I mean how beneficial they are so that's been awesome I'm glad you guys have learned a little bit that's awesome yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and that you you put up with listening to me even though I call you guys and talk to you guys all the time I know, that's awesome when I stopped getting phone calls I found the podcast and I was like I guess this is what it is now this is something we talked in years I know like I figured this would be a good reunion during quarantine I mean there's nothing better else you guys could be doing so here we are <laughs> so all right so this season we're learning about organic versus conventional and we're gonna go on with like different seasons of the future so thinking about that we'll, we'll go reverse so Ben then Matthew Ben what is something you'd like to learn about food production, about the agriculture industry? What is something in particular that you'd like to learn like down the road? Actually, Trevor, I, was, I didn't realize that's what you're doing this next season on. That was exactly what I was going to say. Hey. Um, yeah, no, because, you know, uh, obviously as much as I, I understand that GMOs are important, there's something to be said about organic foods. They, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much nine times out of 10, they do taste better, you know, and obviously they're more expensive and, you know, their quality is different. So it's like, you know, you've talked so much about the use and the need for GMOs, but also, you know, where does this organic um, pipeline belong in, in our uh, society and how, you know, we can kind of equally make sure that we're generating enough food for the entire world, but also that, you know, we're generating quality food and, and you know, what, what are the gives and takes between those two worlds and basically what you just said, you know, organic versus conventional. So, yeah. So, you're doing the right thing already. <laughs> Heck yes. Yeah. And, and we've interviewed a bunch of people so far um, at, with, I mean, future episodes coming out where it's like they're either organic farmers or they've had both or they're conventional. And most of the time they're all like, there's a place for both. I mean, and, and I, I used to always think like, you know, why organic? Why do you want to pay more? But I mean, I'm not a farmer. I should, you know, we should trust the expert, like trust the people that they know why they're growing organic. They know why they're growing conventional. So just trust them. So yeah, I'm excited to learn more about it. And I'm excited for you to listen to it and everybody else to listen to it in season two. So it's awesome. Matt, what are you looking forward to? Dude, so I, I'm going to, uh, this will kind of swing back to the first question too, but a lot of the episodes, I catch glimpses of pieces of technology that have been developed in agriculture and that from an engineering standpoint, um, uh, sounds super fascinating. So not only talking about um, gene editing and GMOs, but uh, milking, you know, robots and uh, just equipment to harvest and all of this I'm thinking about, you know, so I'm listening and knowing that there's food coming from this and in my head, I'm going, wait, I need to, I need to Google what this piece of equipment is. Like who, <laughs> who makes that, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think you had a, a fellow on Vance a while back from that had spent some time working with Monsanto and there's just the level of research that he mentioned into the details of, of things, not just, um, uh, you know, the seeds themselves, but mm -hmm. how deep they're planted, how far apart, you know, how, what watering processes are, are best and all those things, um, to kind of 
bring this together. And uh, so I think it, that level of research and the kind of the procedures that a process goes through to become something that's acceptable on the table after be, being modified genetically or something is uh, would be super interesting to learn about. I know that seems a little unrelated to the technology piece, but <laughs> this, this, the public policy part of what's accepted in that pipeline and how those procedures go through is um, it seems anytime the government's involved, it seems a little more complicated than it appears yeah. on the surface and how those things happen. Yeah, no, dude, that's awesome. That's all really good to hear. And like research and GMOs, I didn't know this, but apparently there are different agencies like the United States Department of Agriculture, the EPA and the FDA, they evaluate the GMOs at different levels. So like the EPA makes sure that um, the pesticides or anything that are applied to GMO crops aren't toxic to humans and the FDA makes sure that they're safe to, to ingest. And so there's all these checks and balances, which is really cool. And then talk about the tech, the technology one, that's an awesome one to say because like the 10,000 foot view, you would think that agriculture is just cow, sows and plows and that's it. But I mean, there's so much technology. I saw um, a video on Instagram a few days ago. There was like this huge like solar panel robot and they have it in these fields and it has wheels and stuff and it has these little arms and a camera and the camera will detect where a weed is, anything that looks different than the regular crop. And the arms will just go down and pick up the weed. And that's it. And But they'll have like five or six of these in like hundreds of acres. So no pesticides or anything. So they're just going 24-7 since they're powered with solar. So crazy technology. I'm glad you said that. That's awesome, man. That's all. And my hunch would be in the places where there's um, <clears throat> the, the need for organic, that there's probably different you know pieces of technology needed to accommodate that like something that picks the weeds versus where you you know would use something an alternative and a conventional method and you know what those differences are is uh seems pretty cool that's pretty awesome that's awesome those are awesome viewpoints gang it's like y'all learned something i'm so proud of you this is so well, great little thanks. bites do what so thanks teach <laughs> yeah you're welcome you're the best students i ever had <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's hey great. i switched my uh my a class this semester to a satisfactory unsatisfactory and i feel like i might need to do the same thing here but i at least got that satisfactory <laughs> barb in dude that's a good accomplishment you are satisfactory you are <laughs> more right. than satisfactory man well i did just receive most improved yard of the month you know on your behalf so. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best this wait did, did you ever get that the the realtor sign out of your yard. Oh, you remember that thing? I did. I, I did. Uh, thanks for helping me dig that up, by the way. We just sat it on the road for a couple of days and I noticed it uh, a couple blocks down after that. So I guess <laughs> they decided we need to sell this house too. And Man, this, this thing was like three six by sixes, like what, like three or four feet in the ground? Like <laughs> it this felt thing like was they were buried six feet deep. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. It was crazy. About as crazy the time we would all go camping in our RVs together. Y'all remember that? Of course. Oh, man. And now, uh, Trevor, is there a way you could attach this like an aquaponics, you know, thing on the back of an RV so we could just <laughs> roam around together? I mean, you could, you could just put a little fish tank inside. Boom. Throw some Man. lettuce on it, some herbs. Yeah. Allie yells at me anytime I, I say, y'all guys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Allie yells at me anytime I say herbs and I say it sometimes just to aggravate her. It's great. Y'all aggravate your wives? Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah matt you can say that now you married man that's right oh you like this <laughs> mr <laughs> warren is that was 2020 that's yeah, right has, matt hasn't enough time to aggravate uh Maggie. i have it <laughs> he will he will <laughs> dude, dude I, I just realized you're i mean you're mr warren that's right and we've mr. been quarantined the whole time we've been married so it's uh you know establishing <laughs> the norms are all new <laughs> establishing the norms yeah so i mean ben he we're here in bay county matthew and i and it, it's it's not too crazy but i mean it's like we're all self-quarantining i mean how is it in la there's what like six million people there i mean what are you guys doing just well i mean it's, it's in uh, not kind of sort of <laughs> uh, it's uh in la county it's 10 million people that's a, that's a, that's a couple uh, and, yeah it's a lot it's a lot of folks um and overall, you know, in the grand scheme of things, LA County has done really well with their numbers. Um, I think last time I looked, it was just over 20,000 cases. 
um, unfortunately, you know, definitely over a thousand deaths. Um, but overall, the statistics here for the population haven't been too outlandish. Um, you know, we're on a very strict stay-at-home order here, um, only essential workers going out and about. So like I was saying earlier, all the film and television productions are completely shut down. I, I read the other day there was 1,091 productions going on in the LA area and I was on one of them and nice. within, within a week's time there was zero productions really that's uh, yeah, crazy I mean, like March 11th was the day that it just all hit the fan we were all uh, about to start shooting on a, um, the show I was on uh, which was a pilot for CBS called The Lincoln Lawyer which was going to be a serialized version of the film that came out a couple years ago and um yeah we were about to start shooting that following monday and that wednesday when disney world disneyland nba when they all started shutting down all of a sudden it just became the writing was on the wall that within 24 hours we were going to get cut you know we we're going to get postponed indefinitely so yeah we just kind of had to pack it all up as fast as we could and send equipment back and that was it but but back to la as a general um i mean yeah you know everyone's wearing masks uh you only go out if you have to obviously you can walk in your neighborhoods and um, at one point, you know, there was rumor going around that there were checkpoints throughout the city trying to keep people essentially in their kind of their, their area, you know, I mean, LA's got 88 different areas. We live in mm -hmm. North Hollywood. Um, and, uh, but we, we have ventured a little, little out of our, our quadrant, just literally stay in the car just to get out, just to drive, just to go somewhere. <laughs> um and uh we haven't run into anything like that but um yeah i mean it's like it's not like there's like looting the streets or anything like that I mean, yeah it, yeah it's calm you know uh thankfully um but there is definitely this like sense of paranoia and since it is such a big place there's such a big population it's like you know if you if you really do the math i mean odds are about one in every 500 people have the virus and it's like you know, you could easily bump into 200, 250 to 500 people in an, in an out, average outing in LA. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, depending on where you're at and where you're going. Um, so it's like, yeah, it, it, you know, stay home. <laughs> stay stay home. home. You know, and, and I think, you know, we're supposed to be on those lockdowns to about May 15th. And then um, we'll see where it goes from there. But we're definitely not like I know some of the states are opening up now. We're, we're, we're not that state. And, I, and I'm thankful for it. I mean, it just it seems to make sense to just make sure we can sustain ourselves as we get out of this. It sounds like it's coming back in the fall. We got to prepare for that. The film industry has a crap ton to prepare for because I mean, when you make a movie or a TV show, when you're you know actually on set, up to 150 to 200 people could be there between crew yeah, and that's true. background. Like our first day uh, on the show I was going to be on, it was going to be you know 200 people on set. So it's like, it, you know, it was never going to happen under these circumstances. So. It's crazy, man. I hope things get back to normal over there. That's for sure. I did too. I did too. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to get back to normal. I think normal is, is gone. This, this is, we're, we're going to be in a new period for the next couple months to years. Um, I think, you know, this is like a, going to be a very defining moment of the 21st century. No more handshakes. We're going to be like Howie Mandel and just do elbows I, or fist bumps. I want, salute. I want to do the salute. So <laughs> yeah, do the salute. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of the salute gang, thanks so much for being on, man. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Anytime. Us. I know. I will. Maybe later on after this season, I'll have you guys on again. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's this really learn this, this season. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So do you guys have anything to plug? I know Matthew, you've got your yard. You're happy about your yard. People can swing by and see your yard. Can I, can I ask you a question? You can ask me in almost, almost any question. Almost. All right. So, <laughs> well, I, uh, <laughs> don't, I hit, don't fall I, over I, there. It's I not, my mic. Oh, not that kind up? of question. Um, <laughs> No, so all right, you ask uh, about the relationship in the the consumer and the farmer at the end of your your podcast, you know? And yeah, I want to know your thoughts on where that should be, right? From what? the you ask that to to farmers, but what about on the on the consumer side? Some of them say it's a a fifty fifty thing, and we should be kind of meeting in the middle. So here we go. What what do I need to do to dude? I like in the that. middle a little bit there. I like that, man. Well, you know, I. I and I always thought that like social media would be a bad thing, like especially with like information that's factual or, or not factual. But I mean, I'm finding out that farmers are more and more going to social media, which is where, you know, consumers are. And so I think if you want to learn something about your food, find a farmer that's active on social media. There's so many like cranberry farmers, dairy farmers, just everything where they showcase their daily life and showcase what's going on. And they like will tell you about misinformation, true information, just stuff like that. And so I think that's really awesome. And I mean, 
I'm trying to put together like better resources about labeling because I mean, when it comes to food, anytime you see food, it's all about labels. Like that's really where you get most of your information from kind of. And so I think like not believing everything you see and if you're curious about it, do some research, but make sure your, your sources are like very, very credible, obviously. And so, I mean, I think it's better. I think it's definitely gotten a little bit better because of social media. It's a little funky because of like, you know, fake news but it's getting better. I think it's definitely getting better, which is really good. I know. I, I appreciate question. it. You're yeah, welcome. Hey, That's thanks, a great question. Thanks for sharing. You're That's welcome. all I got. It, it's funny to have the table turned. I was like, oh, I'm getting asked a question. This Mix it up great. on you. That was cool. <laughs> all right, Ben. Ben, you got any, I know you got your movie to plug. How's it going? Yeah, Nine I today? Well, yeah, Nine today. It's, it's, it hasn't released yet, but we're actually working on distribution and we're getting a couple bites, which is exciting. So I'm, I'm hoping to, that it'll release you know, this year as, as we were expecting. Um, but yeah, it's called Night and Today. You can follow us on Instagram at night, uh, N-I-G-H-T, N-I-N, and then number two, day, D-A-Y. And uh, my first film is on Amazon. Uh, it's called The Man from Outer Space. If you've got time this quarantine, check it out. That was a good movie. I love The Man <laughs> from Outer Space. I'm excited for Night and Today. It's going to be great. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm still waiting for you when you do Dumb, Dumb, and Dumber, and it's going to be starring all three of us. That's going to be the best movie uh, ever. There you go. <laughs> oh, waiting on my casting call. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. Well, thanks so much for being on. I will talk to you soon and hopefully see you guys soon. All right. Good see time. you later. <laughs> later.